The same day Border Patrol warned of cartels spreading rumors of the border being open to asylum seekers, hundreds of migrants attempting to rush the border near downtown El Paso last night. Recently, a member of the Texas National Guard, part of Operation Lone Star, decides to play target practice across the border, turning a migrant's journey into a real-life game of dodgeball. But wait, there's more. Texas Army National Guard soldiers are spilling the beans faster than a taco truck at lunchtime. They're exposing Governor Greg Abbott's Operation Lone Star for what they claim it really is, a political puppet show. In this riveting video, we will look at the details of the migrant fired and the Texas soldiers' expose. Operation Lone Star Texas Army National Guard soldiers have raised concerns regarding the dehumanization of migrants and the alarming diversion of resources for political purposes. Naturally, this has sparked a conversation about the recent dehumanization of migrants by the U.S. One such incident mentioned by the public happened at the Rio Grande in the El Paso area. A Texas National Guard member, deployed as part of Operation Lone Star, fired his weapon across the border into Mexican territory, causing injury to a Mexican migrant who was desperately seeking to reach the United States. This unusual cross-border shooting raised serious questions about the use of force and the treatment of migrants. The Rio Grande, a natural border separating the United States and Mexico, has long been a focal point of immigration and border security discussions. In an effort to reduce illegal crossings, Governor Greg Abbott directed the deployment of U.S. troops, concertina wire, and other impediments along the Rio Grande as part of Operation Lone Star. However, on this fateful evening, the situation took a dramatic turn. The Texas National Guard member, whose identity remains undisclosed, was stationed near the border as part of the security mobilization. As tensions ran high, the soldier made a decision that would have far-reaching consequences. Firing his weapon across the border, he wounded a Mexican migrant who was attempting to make the treacherous journey from Ciudad Juarez to the United States. U.S. officials, speaking on the condition of anonymity, revealed that the shooting occurred during the soldier's deployment along the Rio Grande. The officials, with knowledge of the incident, shared this shocking information shedding light on the events that unfolded that evening. The Texas Military Department, responsible for overseeing the National Guard, released a statement acknowledging that a soldier at the border had discharged a weapon. The department assured the public that a thorough investigation was underway and promised to provide more information as it became available. Erica Miller, a spokeswoman for the Texas Department of Public Safety, confirmed that the shooting is also being investigated by the Texas Rangers, the state's investigative police agency. News of the incident quickly spread, capturing the attention of both the United States and Mexico. Mexican news accounts identified the wounded man as a Mexican migrant who had been struck by gunfire from U.S. authorities. According to these accounts, the man is in stable condition. However, Mexico's foreign ministry did not address the incident, and officials there remained silent, leaving many to wonder about the potential diplomatic implications. Customs and border protection officials clarified that U.S. border patrol agents were not involved in the shooting. According to one CBP official who was briefed on the incident, the tech Texas Guard member opened fire after three men on the Mexican side of the border began attacking a group of migrants with a knife. The migrants, desperate to cross the river, found themselves in a life-threatening situation as violence erupted. In response to this imminent danger, the National Guard member made the split-second decision to use his weapon. The Rio Grande, a lifeline for many migrants seeking a better life, was a treacherous obstacle fraught with danger. Criminal gangs charge exorbitant fees to migrants attempting to cross into the United States. These gangs enforce their toll collection system with lethal violence, leaving migrants vulnerable and at the mercy of their captors. Adam Isaacson, a security analyst at the Washington office on Latin America, expressed his concerns about the incident. He emphasized that it is rare for a U.S. soldier on U.S. soil to discharge their weapon against a civilian. Isaacson stressed the need for a thorough investigation to determine whether there was an imminent risk of loss of life or serious injury. He also highlighted that this is not the first time Texas National Guard personnel assigned to Operation Lone Star have been involved in shooting incidents. In January of last year, soldiers confronted a group of migrants in an abandoned house in the lower Rio Grande Valley of South Texas. During the confrontation, one man suffered a gunshot wound, although the injuries were not life-threatening. These incidents, along with past cross-border shootings involving the U.S. Border Patrol, have raised concerns about the tactics employed in border security operations. Governor Greg Abbott, a fierce critic of President Biden's immigration policies, has directed a significant amount 
amount of state funds, totaling $4 billion to Operation Lone Star. However, immigrant advocacy organizations and some Democrats argue that these tactics put migrants at greater risk of harm. The Biden administration has even taken legal action to challenge the floating barrier system installed by Abbott in the Rio Grande. The incident has further fueled the ongoing debate over immigration policies and the use of military force along the border. Cross-border shootings involving U.S. forces firing into Mexican territory are generally rare. The U.S. Border Patrol was involved in six such incidents between 2010 and 2012, but there have been no reported incidents since then. The shooting by the Texas National Guard member adds to the limited number of cases and raises questions about the rules of engagement and the accountability of U.S. military personnel stationed at the border. The incident has also drawn attention to the diplomatic implications between the United States and Mexico. The United States and Mexico share a complex economic relationship as top trade partners. Any tensions or disputes along the border have the potential to impact this vital economic alliance. Former Republican presidential candidates, such as Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, have pledged to take even more aggressive measures along the border, including sending troops into Mexico to pursue drug traffickers and criminal groups. Mexican officials have warned that such actions would be seen as an invasion by the United States. The incident has also sparked protests and demonstrations on both sides of the border. Activists and human rights organizations have called for greater accountability and transparency in border security operations. They argue that the use of force should always be a last resort and that the rights and dignity of migrants should be respected throughout the immigration process. In response to Governor Abbott's border security measures, the Biden administration has taken legal action to challenge the floating barrier system installed in the Rio Grande. The administration argues that these barriers hinder the natural flow of the river and disrupt the delicate ecosystem. The legal battle between the federal government and the state of Texas adds another layer of complexity to the already contentious issue of border security. Now, adding even more to this already delicate situation, Texas Army National Guard soldiers have spoken out. These soldiers who have served on the front lines of Governor Greg Abbott's Operation Lone Star have come forward to share their shocking concerns about the mission. These soldiers believe that Operation Lone Star is nothing more than a show, a political theater designed to create a spectacle rather than effectively tackle the challenges of immigration. They claim that the mission dehumanizes migrants, diverts resources from more important areas, and grants soldiers and state troopers authority over federal immigration law enforcement. One soldier said, We signed up to serve and protect, but this mission feels like it's more about creating a show of force than finding a real solution. It's disheartening. The soldiers express their deep concerns about the dehumanizing treatment of migrants and the harm caused by the use of concertina wire along the border. They reveal that this razor-sharp wire, intended to act as a deterrent, can cause significant cuts and injuries to those seeking a better life. The soldiers' testimonies shed light on the harsh realities faced by migrants and the moral implications of their involvement in this mission. As these soldiers interact with families and children seeking asylum, they are confronted with the human side of the immigration crisis. The emotional toll weighs heavily on their shoulders, further fueling their concerns about the true intentions behind Operation Lone Star. The number of migrants and asylum seekers at the Texas-Mexico border has reached unprecedented levels, creating a dire need for a broader government response. The Border Patrol alone does not have enough manpower to handle the situation, especially with the backup at official ports of entry. This has led to the deployment of voluntary soldiers from the Texas Army National Guard, enticed by the allure of big paychecks. Some soldiers even choose to extend their service at the border despite the challenges they face. While this may seem like a positive change, it is overshadowed by the strained relationship between Texas and the federal government. Communication between Texas and the federal government has dwindled, with both sides pointing fingers and placing blame. The once collaborative effort has turned into a battleground of conflicting interests and threats of criminal charges. Governor Greg Abbott's strong stance has further strained the relationship as the federal government feels its authority is being undermined. The soldiers' testimonies reveal the moral impact of the situation as they interact with families and children seeking asylum. They witness firsthand the desperation and hope in their eyes, making it even more challenging to reconcile their involvement in a mission they believe is more about creating a spectacle than finding a solution.
solution. Another alarming revelation is the improper enforcement of federal immigration law by state forces involved in the operation. Soldiers highlight the use of misdemeanor charges like trespassing to detain migrants, which may not align with the proper legal procedures. Additionally, it is shocking to learn that National Guard soldiers involved in Operation Lone Star lack proper training in immigration law. This raises serious doubts about their ability to handle complex immigration issues and enforce federal laws appropriately. Operation Lone Star, with its focus on deterrence and punishment, sends a powerful message about how Texas views migrants seeking asylum. By prioritizing enforcement measures over humanitarian considerations, the state risks perpetuating a narrative that devalues the lives and struggles of those in search of safety and a better future. Furthermore, the diversion of resources for political theater not only undermines the effectiveness of Operation Lone Star, but also raises questions about the allocation of taxpayer funds. As soldiers have highlighted, valuable resources that could be used to address the root causes of migration and provide much needed support are being misdirected for the sake of appearances. The consequences of Operation Lone Star extend beyond the immediate impact on migrants and the allocation of resources. It also has the potential to strain diplomatic relations and create a divisive political environment. While soldiers acknowledge the need for a broader government response to the increasing number of migrants and asylum seekers at the border, they emphasize the importance of a comprehensive and humane approach. Operation Lone Star, as it stands, falls short of addressing the root causes of migration and fails to provide a sustainable solution to the border crisis. There is a pressing need for increased cooperation and coordination between federal, state, and local authorities. By working together, these entities can pool their resources and expertise to develop a more effective and sustainable response to the border crisis. This collaborative approach would ensure a more streamlined and efficient process, allowing for the proper allocation of resources and the provision of essential services to migrants. Furthermore, proponents of a comprehensive approach emphasize the importance of addressing the root causes of migration. This includes addressing economic disparities, violence, and political instability in the countries of origin. By investing in long-term solutions that promote stability and opportunity, we can help create conditions that discourage individuals from embarking on dangerous journeys in search of safety. A compassionate approach is also crucial. Instead of focusing solely on enforcement and punishment, advocates argue for a system that prioritizes the protection of human rights and the dignity of migrants. This includes providing access to legal representation, ensuring fair and efficient asylum processes, and offering support and resources to those in need. Additionally, there is a need for increased investment in immigration courts and personnel. The backlog of asylum cases and the lack of sufficient resources have contributed to delays and inefficiencies in the system. By addressing these issues, we can ensure that individuals seeking asylum receive timely and fair hearings, reducing the strain on both migrants and the immigration system. Let's look deeper into some of the most disheartening cases over the years. It is sad. In one video that shocked everyone, we witnessed a heart-wrenching scene unfold on the banks of the Rio Grande. The footage, obtained by Texas Public Radio, shows a mother and her baby in a perilous situation, desperately pleading for help as they struggle to stay afloat. Eyewitnesses who were present at the scene attest to the terrifying ordeal. Both the mother and child went under for a while after several minutes of struggling before resurfacing again. The woman, believed to be a migrant attempting to cross into the United States, can be heard pleading in Spanish, I can't walk anymore. I'm begging you, please help me. I really can't anymore. What makes this scene even more distressing is the presence of Texas National Guard soldiers just a few feet away in a boat. Despite the woman's desperate cries for assistance, the soldiers appear to ignore her pleas, offering no aid or communication. Their lack of response is truly shocking and raises serious questions about their duty to protect and serve. Adding to the disbelief, a Customs and Border Protection airboat is seen speeding by, mere feet away from the struggling mother and child. The the presence of this CBP vessel, which is responsible for conducting rescue operations, only intensifies the sense of frustration and disbelief at the soldiers' inaction. Following the release of the shocking video, the Texas Military Department issued a statement in response to the incident. According to the statement provided to Texas Public Radio, the Texas National Guard soldiers approached the woman and child by boat and determined that there were no signs of medical distress, injury, or incapacitation. They believed that the woman and 
and child had the ability to return to the Mexican shore, and therefore, the soldiers remained on site to monitor the situation. This response from the Texas Military Department raises serious concerns about their assessment of the situation and their duty to assist in such a critical moment. In contrast, Customs and Border Protection remained silent, failing to respond to repeated requests for comment on the incident. The lack of comment from CBP only adds to the frustration and leaves many unanswered questions about their role and responsibility in this distressing situation. While the authenticity of the video was confirmed by Texas Public Radio, it is important to note that they were unable able to independently verify what happened before and after the video cut out. The eyewitnesses who were present during the distressing incident have provided their accounts, shedding light on the gravity of the situation and their perspectives on the actions of the Texas National Guard soldiers. Priscilla Lugo, the Justice Advocacy Coordinator for Latino Justice PRLDEF, recorded the video between Shelby Park and the Kickapoo Tribe Reservation in Eagle Pass. Lugo vividly describes the events leading up to the mother and child's desperate pleas for help. She recounts two of the adults successfully cross said the river and that's when we see mom carrying a baby they get stuck too tired to walk mom gets too tired to walk and she's crying screaming begging for help lugo's account is further supported by jesse fuentes the local owner of epi's canoe and kayak who was present during the incident fuentes explains that there were two water rafts near the woman with two guardsmen in each raft positioned just four to six feet away the woman's desperate cries for assistance are captured in the video as she pleads please bring the boat closer please don't abandon me here the video clearly shows the four guardsmen watching the woman intently, but their lack of communication or aid is striking. Priscilla Lugo reflects on this disturbing scene, stating, It's so stark to see how we are fed this lie and this performance that these people are here to keep us safe and that they're here doing a public safety measure. They are literally just letting a mother and a young child potentially drown, taking that risk. And that is considered a viable way to do public safety in the state of Texas and border communities. These eyewitness accounts provide a first-hand perspective on the distressing incident and highlight the disbelief and outrage felt by those who witnessed the Texas National Guard soldiers in action. Another incident occurred when Carmelo Cruz Marcos found himself in the treacherous terrain of Skeleton Canyon, a corridor known for its unforgiving nature. Carmelo was not alone. He was traveling with a group of at least nine other migrants, all hoping to cross the border and find a better future. Clad in camouflage and carpet booties, a common sight among migrants traversing the region, Carmelo and his companions were determined to make their their way to the other side. Little did they know that this night would forever change their lives. Enter Kendrick Bybee Staheli, a Border Patrol agent who joined the force in 2019 after a brief stint as a police officer in Utah. Staheli was assigned to the agency's mounted unit known as the Horse Patrol. His partner, Tristan Tang, was a seven-year veteran of the agency. On that fateful night, Staheli and Tang were on duty, patrolling the area for signs of unauthorized border crosses. As they continued their patrol, their radios crackled to life alerting them that a sensor had detected the presence of migrants in the vicinity. With a sense of urgency, Staheli and Tang headed toward the sensor's location. The terrain grew increasingly rugged, forcing the agents to dismount and continue on foot. The darkness of the night was only pierced by the faint glow of their flashlights as they pressed forward, determined to apprehend those who had crossed the border. And then, they spotted them, the group of migrants, including Carmelo Cruz Marcos, who had become their target. Startled by the agents' presence, the migrants fled, their desperate driving them to seek cover in the darkness. Staheli, with his partner Tang providing support from a distance, closed in on Carmelo, who was now separated from the rest of the group. And then, in a split second, everything changed. Carmelo, facing Staheli, turned around and threw a punch with a closed fist. Staheli caught off guard, felt the blow glance off his shoulder and strike his jaw. The situation escalated rapidly, plunging into chaos. Staheli, driven by fear and the instinct to protect himself, tackled Carmelo to the ground. He demanded that Carmelo place his his hands behind his back, but the migrant failed to comply. A struggle ensued as Staheli tried to pry Carmelo's arms out from under him, but his efforts proved futile. Fearing for his life and the safety of his partner, Staheli resorted to desperate measures. He began punching Carmelo in the face repeatedly. In a moment of desperation, Carmelo managed to buck Staheli off his back, creating a brief respite from the relentless assault. But the danger was far from over. Seizing the opportunity, Carmelo's hand reached for a rock, a weapon of defense in his desperate attempt to survive. Staheli, now faced with a potential threat to his life, made a split-second decision that would have irreversible consequences. Staheli drew his service pistol, pointed it at Carmelo, and fired. Tang, hearing the shots, rushed to the scene. He found Staheli standing over Carmelo's lifeless body, the gravity of the situation sinking in. Tang, trying to make sense of the chaos, attempted to provide medical care to Carmelo, but it was
was too late. The life had already been extinguished, leaving behind a scene of tragedy and despair. After the fatal encounter, investigators sought to gather information from the migrants who had been traveling with Carmelo Cruz Marcos. Their testimonies paint a chilling picture that contradicts the official narrative put forth by Staheli and his partner, Tristan Tang. One of the most disturbing claims made by the migrants is that the Border Patrol agents appeared to tamper with evidence and concoct a cover story following Carmelo's death. They alleged that the agents moved Carmelo's body after he was killed, raising serious questions about the integrity of the investigation. Even more shocking is the allegation that Staheli's partner, Tristan Tang, reassured one of the migrants that everything would be fine as long as Staheli claimed he was scared and that Carmelo had threatened him with a rock. These allegations suggest a potential cover-up and a disturbing lack of transparency. Ricardo Peña, the head of the Mexican consulate in Douglas, Arizona, where Staheli and Tang are based, condemned the use of violence and expressed his support for a thorough and independent investigation. The consulate stands with Carmelo's family in their quest for justice and accountability. The investigation into Carmelo's killing also shed light on the role of the Border Patrol's critical incident teams, a controversial crime scene response unit. These teams, which have faced allegations of tampering with investigations and evidence in cases involving the deaths of migrants, are now being disbanded after years of scrutiny. The disbandment reflects the need for transparency and unbiased investigations in cases of this nature. Carmelo's wife, Yasmin Nape Quintero, has passionately defended her husband's character, stating that he would never threaten the Border Patrol. She seeks to clear his name and ensure that other families do not suffer the same pain and loss. After months of silence, the Cochise County Attorney's Office made a shocking announcement. They stated that there was insufficient evidence to bring charges against Border Patrol Agent Kendrick Bybee Staheli for the shooting of Carmelo Cruz Marcos. The office claimed that Staheli's actions appeared justified under Arizona self-defense laws, leaving many questioning the integrity of the investigation. The Cochise County Sheriff's Department, the lead local agency that investigated the case, released a 28-page file that formed the basis for the prosecutor's decision. This file provided insight into the evidence and testimonies gathered during the investigation. In his interview with authorities, Staheli described fearing for his life during his encounter with Carmelo Cruz Marcos. Staheli's partner, Tristan Tang, who did not witness the fatal encounter, confirmed that Staheli was distraught after killing Carmelo and asked to be held. The killing of Carmelo Cruz Marcos has ignited outrage and condemnation, both locally and internationally. The incident has brought to the forefront the deeply rooted issues surrounding the treatment of migrants on the US-Mexico border. People from all walks of life are demanding answers and accountability for the loss of human life. For many, this case has become a symbol of the systematically brutal treatment of migrants. It highlights the urgent need for reform within the Border Patrol and a re-evaluation of the tactics employed in border enforcement. The conflicting accounts and allegations surrounding this incident have underscored the importance of transparency and independent investigations. The demand for an impartial inquiry, free from any potential conflicts of interest, has grown louder. It is crucial to ensure that the truth is uncovered and justice is served. Carmelo's family, along with their legal representation, Khans and Khans, are at the forefront of the fight for justice. They are determined to clear Carmelo's name and hold those responsible accountable for their actions. Their pursuit of justice extends beyond their own tragedy as they seek to prevent similar incidents from occurring in the future. Public pressure has played a significant role in shedding light on this case and pushing for accountability. The outrage expressed by individuals, organizations, and communities has amplified the voices of the marginalized and brought attention to the systemic issues at play. The killing of Carmelo Cruz Marcos underscores the urgent need for reform within the Border Patrol and the broader immigration system. It calls for a comprehensive examination of policies, training, and accountability mechanisms to ensure the protection of human rights and the prevention of further tragedies. If you enjoyed this video, click on the card showing on your screen right now for more videos.